This is my story about upgrading our eight-year-old HD surround sound home theater to 4K 7.1.2 Dolby Atmos system. So we started out for, uh, eight years ago buying a Sony Trinitron HD TV 34 inch CRT. I didn't want to get a uh, LCD TV because we have a viewing angle issue that really bugs me. So CRT, even though this TV weighed 200 pounds, I thought this was the best TV available at the time, so we bought that. And I'm not one to upgrade every few years. I think it's just too expensive. So I try to buy something that has some future proofness to it. So I knew a CRT TV would, that would last quite a while and it would be bright and so forth. So we kept that. And then uh, for a receiver, we got the D Denon AVR 2807, which could uh, drive a 7.1 system, which is what we ended up getting as far as speakers. So speakers, we got the Oinkio SKS HT540. I didn't want to spend a lot of money on speakers because I spent a lot of money on the TV and the receiver. The receiver 2012 was over $1,000. So so this would seem to fit our room and uh, seem like it got good, good reviews. So went with that. And for Blu-ray, we've had a few Blu-rays over the years. We've upgraded that as we went along. So the current one is the is the Samsung BD uh, F900. So that'll do a uh, good job on Blu-rays. And then for a controller, universal controller, originally we had this Home Theater Master MX700, and eventually that kind of pooped out. So we upgraded to the Logitech Harmony One, and this is a really nice one. It's super easy to program. This one is basically writing a program where you had to program each key, and it's kind of a pain. This one, you just pick your components, and it pretty much puts everything together for you. You can do some tweaking of the uh, touchscreen menus, but it really works well. So this receiver, this uh, controller replaces our receiver controller, the Blu-ray controller, and our TV controller. Now, of course, this is not a Sony TV controller because last year we upgraded to a LG C9 OLED 55 inch. And uh, the reason we got that was, was because, uh, I, again, I'm interested in future proofing. So this was the first TV OLED. I decided, again, I wanted OLED because of the viewing angle issues. And I thought OLED has the best TV picture quality. And um, I wanted future proofing. So I wanted HDMI 2.1 uh, on the ports on the back. And this was the first TV that came out with that. And it all had four HDMI uh, 2.1 ports on the back, so I knew that would be good for another eight years or so. Uh, so we got that last year. That also helped us save a lot of money because we also cut the cord with Comcast, our local cable provider. So now we're just using um, uh, Hulu Live TV for our TV channels, and we have Netflix and Amazon Prime Video, and we also have Disney Plus. So here's a picture of our old TV, and uh, like I said, it, it was a good performer, and it stayed bright and clear for uh, eight years without really any issues. It was 191 pounds, so when I got rid of it, I had to hire two really strong guys to come and take it away, so that, was, that worked out okay, though. So here's our current receiver, Denon AVR 2807. So for headphones, I'll show you in a minute. We, we just use the headphone jack. I tried playing around with using different zones and so forth, but it just, it's too complicated to switch zones and so forth. With the headphone jack, you just plug it in and your headphones are working and the speakers are off, which is what we want. So I'll show you that in a little bit. <clears throat> but I did the wiring. Oh, I put these fans on top to uh, cut down on the, uh, or to, to improve the heat flow out of the, uh, out of the uh, cabinet. So they're just uh, PC fans that are running off of uh, a plug that 
is activated the same time the uh, TV is, or rather the receiver turns on, then this turns on and the uh, uh, fans turn on. So that helps us the airflow. So you can see in back here, I used flat cabling for our 7.1 system. So we've got, uh, I'll show the speakers in a second, but the cables go through this uh, uh, plastic channel here along this wall and around toward the back of the back of the room. So. so we can reuse all this wiring. I just have to add a couple more um, wires for the Atmos speakers, which I'll go over in a little bit here. It's a little hard to see down here, but I have a power strip where first location is always on, second two locations are the control. So this is the receiver, it's always on. Uh, this is the uh, TV plugs in here, and then that if, if this if there's power going to this device, then the rest of these turn on. So this last one over here is the plug for the Google Chromecast Ultra 64 that I bought. So we could stream things that aren't uh, we don't have apps for. So that's my power strip down here. All right, so let's look at the speakers. Here's the center speaker. It's above the TV. We have two front speakers that have uh, two five-inch uh, woofers and one tweeter. And there's one on this side. And then for surrounds, oh, here's the subwoofer. So it's an eight-inch subwoofer. For the surrounds, we have basically bookshelf speakers. So there's a surround, there's surround sides and surround backs. So the couch is away from the uh, back of the wall. Back of the couch is away from the wall. So here's the wire channel I ran up the wall. Pretty much disappears. And then the last one on this side we have a bookcase. So the last speaker is actually in the bookcase. So we'll be upgrading all these speakers. I'll go over that when I get to the new system. Now I did. I went into Atmos. So a couple years ago I bought these. Oinkyo uh, Atmos up firing speakers, but I never really hooked them up. They didn't. I re since realized that with our ceiling, we have a, a vaulted ceiling, pretty tall vaulted ceiling. They probably wouldn't really work that well. So, so for the new system, I'm going to buy. Uh, I already bought actually speakers that would go up on the wall. They'll be front height speakers. They'll be left and right front height speaker. That'll take care of that. And then for our Blu-ray player, we've got in this cabinet here. And behind that, I've got a uh, Ethernet switch. So I ran hardwired. I, I, I think, uh, you know, wireless is fine, but if you really want performance, you want a hard wires, hardwire Ethernet. So I ran some wires under the house a few, about 10 years ago. Actually, I guess when I got the first TV, yeah. So eight years ago. Ran wires under the house from our cable modem over to here, and then I have a high-speed switch here. So the Blu-ray player is on on the uh, uh, internet, Ethernet, and uh, TV, of course, is on it. And the new receiver will be on it. Now this Blu-ray player is fine. We're, uh, well, I, it doesn't play 4K uh, movies, which I have some, including uh, Star Wars. And uh, I've got uh, the Fifth Element and some other ones I want to try and, and the, the Martian and so forth. So for that, we're going to wait to upgrade to the new Xbox Series X, which is coming out, say, November of this year. So that'll, re that'll sit in this cabinet and replace that. I'll probably have to cut some holes in the back for um, better airflow. That's what I did down here in our... Uh, lower cabinet. So you can see in the back there, there's a bunch of holes drilled using my hole saw. Also drill some holes in the base here so air could come up through. This is where we used to have our Comcast box, which generated a lot, at least the first one. Generated a ton of heat, so I had some fans on that too. And then the hot air can come out the back, and I have some holes on the bottom for air to come in. So We'll do that over here in this cabinet when I get the uh, Xbox. That'll fit nicely in this cabinet. It's kind of tall and thin, so it's like a cube, tall cube. So that should fit right in this little section right here. So, so 
I'm going to go through each speaker choice I made and uh, give some of my thinking behind it. So, start with I had to pick front speakers and I had some limitations on that. <clears throat> These are the ones I selected Polk Audio TSI 300 three way tower speakers. There's one over there now. My big problem is I didn't have that much room on this side of the cabinet. So, the existing speaker I built a uh, a little box for it to sit on. I painted black. And then the other speaker on this side is sitting on top of the subwoofer. So I selected this one. It was a, high, a nice high performance speaker in my price range and it was thin enough. The only one I could find that was thin enough to fit over here easily. So obviously I could have gone a little bit wider but I didn't really want to go much, too much wider. So This is nice. It's got a port on the bottom and it's got some feet. Keep it up off the carpet so I think it should work okay. So well, that's the two new front speakers. Now I'll go on to the others. For the center speaker, I tried to I decided to splurge a little bit. I figured you know the center speaker is really critical for dialogue or whatever, so I wanted to have a good center speaker. So I paid about twice as much for this speaker as the other speakers. Uh, there is enough room for it to fit on the shelf up on top. That was important, obviously. Uh, this is the Polk Audio Signature Series S30 center speaker. So oh, one thing I should mention is once I, I selected the front speakers I decided I was going to stick with Polk <clears throat> for all the rest of the speakers. That just made sense. So this is, fits up there on the shelf nicely and should give some really good uh, dialogue center speaker uh, performance. So that's the one I picked for that one. Now for the subwoofer I don't have a lot of room in this in this uh, media room so I picked another 8 inch subwoofer. In this case I picked the Yamaha this is one that fit the best for me. The Polk ones didn't really fit in there. I think that's and for various reasons, but this is the one I selected. One thing that was important is it had its uh, vent port on the right side. So if you can see over here, if it was on the left side, it wouldn't work as well because we were right up against the wall. So the fact that it had a right side uh, port worked perfectly for me. Now the other subwoofer was just wide enough to fit in between the wall and the and the media cabinet. This one's slightly wider, but it is uh, narrow enough so that it will only block this uh, <coughs> fixed part. So I can still open this door with no problem. So It will sit in front of the speaker cabinet, but it's not that big. And now that I have the towers for my fronts, they can sit behind the uh, subwoofer and the actual speakers on the tower will be up here. So that should work out fine. So that's it for the subwoofer. And so for the surrounds, I remember we have four of those. There's surround side, surround back, the other surround side is over here on the cabinet. I decided to pick these uh, Polk Audio OM, OWM3 speakers because they're about the same size as the ones I have now. In fact, they're a little bit more sleek. Plus they're white, so they won't show up against the wall. Everybody likes that. And I need to get a new mounting system for them because the existing mounts are not designed for this kind of speaker. So on the back of the speaker, you can see there's this uh, one quarter inch uh, bolt. So the Mono Price uh, mounts uh, come with a system to we screw this into the back of the speaker, and then you can mount it directly on the wall and adjust the angle. So I'll show you that in a second. Here. 